One of the earliest and frankly easiest decisions that I ever had when developing Terragenesis was that we were going to need some kind of random event system. The idea of transforming a planet was cool, but it was fundamentally just about shifting numbers. You've got this number, you need to raise it up. You've got this number, you need to lower it down. And that can get really boring really fast. We needed some way to mix things up and make unexpected things happen. Now, a lot of video games have some equivalent of a random event system. I was most familiar with those from Civilization or Alpha Centauri. A lot of strategy games have them. Different facilities being destroyed, different resources being found, good things, bad things, but all just designed to shake things up and make you think in new ways and react to things that may not be going according to what you had planned. In Terragenesis, this system is called Eris, E-R-I-S, named after the Greek goddess of chaos. And that's really sort of how I viewed it, is this was a system that existed just to make things go a little nuts sometimes. And I knew that I wanted to have some good events and some bad events because I didn't want it to always be bad news whenever a pop-up appeared. But they come at you from a lot of different directions and they come in a lot of different types. In the code, we distinguish between a bunch of different categories of random events. And each one has a keyword. So for example, boon events are unexpected things that are good and you can't avoid them. You don't have to do anything, you just get a nice thing. Things like trade routes. There are also disasters, unavoidable bad things. There are accept events where you have to give up something to get something cool. It's a choice. There are also choose events where you're presented with two equally good options and you get to pick which one you want. There are avoid events where you have to spend something or else a penalty will kick in. There are even just flavor events that don't actually do anything mechanically. They're just, you know, cool. The way they're set up in the game, you can think of it kind of like a deck of cards. They're not totally random in the sense that there's no chance that you'll get the same event back to back. What we do is we populate a list of every possible event in the game, and then we just start going through them. First, second, third, fourth, all the way down. And then whenever we get to the bottom and we have no more events in the list, we repopulate the list, shuffle them around, and start at the top again. So you can think of it very much like taking a deck of cards, shuffling it, and then dealing them out. Taking the cards back, shuffling it again, dealing them back out. So that way, you're never at risk of just getting the same event again and again and again by random chance. You always work your way down through the list. But it does keep it random. You can never predict which event is coming next based on, oh, I already had this event and I know which one came after it last time. The Eris system is one of the oldest systems in Terragenesis. I built it very early on, and it hasn't really changed since. We've done a few tweaks to make it a little more efficient, and there have been some bugs, especially early on when Terragenesis was first being released on iOS, that uh, some wacky stuff happened. In particular, in the first few months of the game's history, we had a bug that drove me to distraction. I could not figure out what was happening until finally I realized the system that we used to count down until you get the next event was being treated in the code independently from the game. So what that means is you would launch the game and you'd be on Mars, okay, and you'd be getting random events. But then if you switch to Venus, those Martian random events would continue ticking down and you'd have a Venus timer ticking down. And then if you switch to Mercury, you'd have a Mars timer ticking down and a Venus timer ticking down and a Mercury timer ticking down. And I was getting these bug reports from players saying that they were just getting nonstop random events. It was just, it was just pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up. And there was no time to actually play the game. And I had no idea what was going on until I finally realized, oh, it's how we're treating the timers. So we've had some things like that along the road that, you know, were bugs that you had to figure out. That was a particularly weird one, uh, but, for the most part, the Eris system is as it has always been, and we've just been adding more random events. I think we've got probably over a hundred random events of different kinds now, and that doesn't count variety within each random event. You see, in the code, when a random event happens, it doesn't always do the same thing. Sometimes there's branching logic within the random event. And sometimes this is obvious, like if you get a trade route, it's going to randomize what two cities have that trade route. But even then, there are some random events that have options within them. Things like, hey, you got a new cuisine, but the type of cuisine is randomized. So the descriptions vary in each instance. 
There are even some that look like completely different random events. Whenever you get a random event that is a cool new building has been built in your city, like a museum or a library or a school, that's all one event. To be perfectly honest, a lot of my favorite random events don't actually do anything. The flavor events, they just are cool narrative. Some of them are like urban legends that are developing on your planet. There are some sort of qualitative senses of like, here's how your people dress, here's what your people eat, here's the architecture style. To me, those really help bring the world to life. And we've seen a lot of people report that there are some weird synergies in how these things uh, evolve. You know, people will talk about how there was like uh, an influx of Italian immigrants into their city, and then right afterward they got a random event that like, this city's food tastes amazing. Uh, we got one funny person from Britain who posted that they got a British uh, immigrant group in their city, and then the food got really bland and awful, and they said, yeah, that, that makes sense. We also use the random event system for more sort of utilitarian things. Uh, on your first game of Terra Genesis, you'll be getting random events that are just like, did you know boxes, that sort of thing. This system of counting down and then ultimately displaying a pop-up is really useful and we have it going in a lot of different ways that you wouldn't normally think of as random events. The other thing that's fun about the random events is that they're pretty self-contained, which means that we can add more kind of whenever we want. You know, most features in Terra Genesis, it feels like open heart surgery, adding them or changing them because so many different systems in Terra Genesis are so interconnected. You don't want to accidentally tweak this one facility's effects, but then end up breaking something in the Trappist-1 system. But with the random events, they just kind of are what they are. And you can add another card to the deck without actually changing anything. I've had a lot of fun coming up with new random events, talking to the fans. A lot of our random events were suggested by fans and adding this richness and depth into the game that is independent of whatever the player is doing. We even had one random event give birth to a whole little section of the Terra Genesis fandom. There's an event in the game where one of your facilities gets upgraded to level 10, which is something that you can't normally achieve on your own. And initially, it always happened. You couldn't decline it. Which, why would you decline an upgrade? It's a free thing. Like, it's, yeah, it just happens. Isn't that great? You're welcome. Except, after the game came out, I realized Terra Genesis is a game about balance. You don't always want this particular facility to be so much more powerful than you were expecting. And so people's worlds were getting ruined by this random event that I thought was like this nice thing that I was giving to the players, and they treated it like it was a disaster. Which, of course, makes sense. And so ultimately, the character of this prodigy engineer who went around upgrading everybody's facilities and breaking things in the process gave rise to the character of Steve. Steve was the bane of the fan's existence and people would post screenshots on Facebook and be like, damn you, Steve, when one of their uh, facilities got upgraded beyond what they actually wanted. That's why I'll never forgive Steve. And it was especially rough because back then you couldn't downgrade facilities. If a facility got upgraded to level 10, that's just what it was now. Ultimately, we fell in love with the idea of Steve so much that when we started designing the governor system and we had to come up with a whole bunch of different characters with different effects in the game, we ended up making one of them Steve. You know, I like to think that Terra Genesis is just an inherently awesome game and would be fun no matter what, but with a game like this, there was definitely the risk of it being just like a spreadsheet simulator, you know? No real character, it's just about pushing numbers up and down. And I think the random event system really took this from being a simulation and turned it into a game. So that's the story on the random event system. It's a thing that we're always refining, we're always adding new random events, and in a weird way, it's kind of become one of my favorite parts of the game. As I've been doing these dev diaries, I've been asking the players what do they want to hear me talk about next, and this video was actually requested by Iman Economist, who wanted to hear about the random event system. If you've got a topic from Terra Genesis that you'd like me to cover, or if you'd like to just hear more about what it's like to be an indie dev, or any question really, post it in the comments below and I'll try to address it in a future video. In the meantime, I want to give a special shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. You get a whole bunch of benefits for joining us on Patreon, and their support really allows us to continue making Terra Genesis and everything else we're working on. Thank you so much.
those of you who have joined. So check out our Patreon page. And in the meantime, be sure to check out Slice of Science and The Synthesis and all the other shows that we're putting up here on YouTube. You can subscribe and hit the bell to be notified about our next videos. Be sure to let me know what you're interested in hearing about next week. And in the meantime, happy terraforming.